you for all the likes and subscriptions and all your comments and questions. Looks like we're off to a good start and we're happy to have you. Howie came up with a really good idea and I'm going to let him tell you about it. So I have a fish farm back on the Impulse SV Patreon server. And uh, if any of you have had a fish farm, you know that you get a lot of random books with really random enchantments. So as a way to get rid of the books and actually make use of them, we have a shopping district and uh, Rick has a really great vending machine system. So we decided to use that in a bookshop over in the shopping district on the Impulse SV server. So let's head over there and take a look and see how it all came together. All right, Howie's design is great here. We got the bookstore with the uh, the book, and that looks great. Then you go up here, you put a diamond into the dropper, just one diamond, and you get three books back. All right, let's take a second and I'll show you how this works. Drop a diamond in, and three random books show up. Let's try it again, and this time we'll put in two diamonds, and you'll notice that it waits for the first diamond to disappear, and then the next three books show up. So let's head back to the other server and we will show you how this works. All right, here we are. And this is the heart of the design. This is the filter that was uh, designed or improved by Impulse SV. And uh, Rick was good enough to not only show me how this works, but explain it in such a way that I actually understood it. So hopefully we can do the same and explain it to, uh, to you guys as well. All right, so key to this system is the fact that in the hopper, we have four uniquely named items. Um, Rick, you want to explain why this is key? Well, Impulse designed this so that it couldn't be overflowed. And if someone were to just may say be messing around and they had a stack of diorite in their inventory and they put it in there just to see what happened, it would accept it. And then it would screw up the balance and some of your diamonds might flow through and your whole filter system would be broken. And this is a lot of what happened to Impulse with the farms and stuff. The wrong thing would go through and screw up the filters. So by naming them uniquely, there are only two things that can pass through this filter. Your diamond and something that has exactly the same name as your objects. So you name those on an anvil then? Yes. Okay. So we have four uniquely named items and we have 41 diamonds which is the item that we want to get in the end so now if we take a look at the comparator it's powered we have a power of two here power of one on this block and keeping in mind from the last episode we discussed that every time you go a block you lose a power of one now on this block we have a power of zero that block if it was powered would power the uh, repeater which would then turn off the torch. But because there isn't enough items right now, this is basically turned on, which is locking that hopper. Power to this, this um, torch is powering that block, which is locking that hopper. So now if we get up here and look, um, Rick, do you have any diamonds you can throw in the uh, hopper here for Absolutely. us? And there you see it keeps going up to a power of one. When that happens, our repeater gets powered. And then our torch, when that happens, actually will turn off. See if there briefly. It turns off, which then unlocks a hopper, which allows the item above to then flow down. Rick, can you explain to us how the locking hopper works? The block that is attached adjacent to the hopper is powered. And the secret is that the top hopper can't feed into that. It's not actually the top hopper that's locked. It's the one underneath. But the one underneath being powered won't accept any items. So everything is locked in the top hopper. So items will flow down from one hopper to a hopper below unless that hopper is locked. Unless the one under it is locked, correct. Right. The priority is to go down, not across. Okay, so priority is always to go down, not across. That's, that's a key piece to know. So while this hopper is locked, nothing will flow into it. But once you put an item in, let's put a bunch of diamonds in there, then that will unlock and then allow them to flow into the hopper below. Okay, so that being the heart of our system, we built upon that, and Rick has an ingenious 
vending machine system um, that we use and a lot of people use at the shops. So we started off with a smaller, well, a version without a um, an indicator light on it. And uh, let's go in and take a look. So back down here is, again, you'll notice that this is our filter here. So what did you do next after we had the filter here? What was your idea? You asked me if you could get a triple pulse. You said, I need three pulses so I can get three books. So what we did was we took a pulse off of, like you were explaining earlier, how when your diamond passes through, this third block is activated. That feeds into this little loop right here, which uh, takes the signal, boosts it to 15, and then slowly runs it around. So the first thing that happens is you get a signal from the repeater that's unlocking things. That's the very first signal to reach. Then you get a signal from this block right here, which goes straight through the four tick delay and up the tower. And then you get a third signal as it works its way around this four tick delay, or excuse me, 12 tick delay. And they all hit the same place. They all go up and activate the dropper and the dropper shoots a book free signal. Okay, so we're gonna walk you through how the uh, pulses work with the original pulse running through up through here and then we have two more pulses that are based on delays over here so did you guys see that let's do one more there we go so that gives us our signal We'll unlock the, lock, the, the uh, hopper there, but then it also allows this dropper to now feed in. And this is the ingenious part of the design. Then the books show right back here. Every time you put a diamond in, one, two, three books show up. So we thought that this was really great, but then we came up with what happens if someone puts in too many diamonds at once. So Rick then had this idea that I love that actually, uh, would you say it, it locks the dropper? I mean, it, technically. There's a timer there. It sends a hot signal through and locks the dropper so it can't receive anything until your processing pulses are done. All right. Rick, can you explain to me how the uh, locking mechanism works for the dropper? Okay, it's pretty simple. Just as here, it uh, drops a signal down to our loop. The same signal activates this repeater, which boosts it to 15 so it can travel as far as we need it to. That puts it into a decay circuit loop. We talked about those before. And that's our timer. As long as that circuit stays active, it sends a signal up here and it locks that bottom hopper. So nothing can pass through until that unlocks. The decay circuit is based on something we'll show you specifically. It's based on this uh, the strength of 15 running round and round and losing one signal every round. And um, how we'll go into that at some point. Let me put a diamond in here so he can demonstrate what's going on back there. So you see, that, see how bright that signal is? And then it just slowly gets weaker and weaker. Let's take a look at that again. So you see how that drops lower and lower. You can actually, if you'll point your F3 at it, they can watch it count down. Yep. Ready? Go for it. Perfect. So you can see how the signal starts off very strong and then it drops down by one um, and that is just based on um, that loop that we have here with those comparators since comparators don't change the strength of your signal you have a strength of 15 coming in from this repeater and every time it gets to this um, third piece of redstone it goes down one it doesn't drop when it goes through the block so it only drops one power for each circuit and 15 circuits later you have no power left and your clock shuts off Perfect. 
So, Rick, items that are in a dispenser or in a hopper or a dropper will create a power signal, correct? Correct. Or a chest or anything, even a furnace that holds items. So using that, we're able to then take the signal and bring that up across here and then all the way around to our redstone lamp, which then will show that we actually have items in stock. So if we go ahead and if we take those items out of the dropper, we'll be able to see how the uh, signal turns off. And there we go. We're now out of stock. Because that's no longer powered, the comparator doesn't see the signal. Our redstone torch there now is powered because it was inverted before. And then this one is turned off. All right, here we have two different torch towers that actually both will behave the exact same way. We both have, is it six torches? Six. So, but one is much smaller. It's much more compact. So they, they both work the exact same way. There's no difference except for just the design of using a side torch instead of a top level torch. So keep in mind that an even number of torches will give you an inverted signal, while an odd number of torches will give you the same signal at the bottom as at the top. So your signal will be the same on every odd torch, one, five, seven, nine. And if we go ahead and turn them on, you'll see how the signal flows up. Yay, diamonds. And also keep in mind that there's a one tick delay for every torch you use, so it's not instantaneous. So this is going to have a six tick delay on that. Exactly. So I basically thought we were done here, and uh, you know, most people would call it done, um, but not Rick. Uh, Rick took a look at this design, and while I was uh, futzing around with the, uh, the light and everything else, Rick then over here compacted the entire thing. Um, he wanted his red zone to be much smaller and much more compact and much neater. Here we go, three diamonds. You can see our delay coming across there, locking our hopper. You see our multiple pulses coming across so that we get three books. And three diamonds equals nine books. A lot. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed our little project here. I hope it all makes sense. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us any questions, any comments. We're always happy to hear them. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the subscriptions. And we appreciate you taking your time to watch our video. And if you wouldn't mind, let me know what I can do to explain things better. Thanks. And until next time, I'm Howie. I'm Rick. Thanks for joining us on Simply Redstone. Take care.